Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, September 12, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, we had what's called a pullback day. Today was labeled as a turn day. We talked about it last week. We talked about it in the live room several times that today slash tomorrow could be a turn period for the market. Now, we have to qualify that. Does that mean it turns today down like it did and it keeps going for 17 days in a row? No, that's not what it means. We could certainly go down further. We're going to talk about the numbers, the important places and what happens if. But what we also have to do is keep in mind this is quadruple witching options expiration week where weird stuff happens regular way options expiration we also have the cpi data release on wednesday morning at 8 30 a.m eastern standard time what does that mean that means that whoever puts out that number some government agency puts out the number and then everybody goes wild about what the number means is it good is it bad is bad news good news good news bad news what's the fed going to do let's send the market in x direction so therefore it creates opportunity for traders how so because we don't guess at what the market's going to do based on the number what we do is we take what the market is doing based on the number we find the important numbers on the chart and we can affect the trade accordingly from an intraday perspective that's what we do we do that inside the numbers we do that in the live room in real time everybody has the numbers before the market even opens we'll get to that stuff a little later let's go back to the daily chart what's the important place on the chart we're going to call it 445 Write this down, put it on a sticky note. If she starts to get below from an intraday perspective, 445, closes candles below, all that stuff, it's going to open the door for the lows that was already a test of the breakup candle low. There's your breakup candle low. We already had a successful test. If they come back down, it's first time, best time, not second time, best time. If they give it up, if they start closing daily by chance below that area where the arrow is pointed to, you must be prepared for another leg lower. We talked about it in the live room today. We talked about it in the live room yesterday. We're going to expect two-way markets most of this week. We certainly got one today. We'll get to the intraday stuff in a few moments. So let's not be surprised if they pull the rug out a little bit on CPI. Let's not be surprised if they pop the tape a little bit on CPI. You have a lot of traders trading the intra week and same day expiration options. They're certainly wreaking havoc and issuing pies in the face to those folks. Those same day expirations are like taking a walk in quicksand. You either have to get across quick or you're going to sink if you're wrong even for a couple of hours. You can be right on the trade, wrong in the option. From where I sit, those tend to be a market maker's best friend. We have certainly have some traders in the live room trading those intraday options or same-day expiration options. However, you have to know your numbers. You have to take your profit. We're trained to do that in the live room. I don't recommend you try that at home by yourself. Putting things in perspective, peering back a little bit, taking a long view, the weekly chart, nothing's happened. They're just eating time off the clock from a weekly chart perspective. The intraday stuff from a weekly chart perspective is mainly in the category of nonsense. Even the monthly chart is eating time off the clock in a pullback bullish flaggish kind of pullbackish situation however a lot can happen intra-month you can't trade off a monthly chart other than a long-term position type of trade that's not really a trade that's more of an investment type of situation let's use today's activity as a learning opportunity before we get over to inside the numbers here's a 240 chart aka a four-hour chart here's a breakdown candle so what did the market do today? 
it ran up to run a test of the breakdown candle high and was summarily rejected. How many times have we seen that before? About as many times as we see him spike the low and rip it back up in the other direction, our favorite live trading room trading opportunity within the morning rush hour, might I add. Two hour chart shows you the same thing, breakdown candle. They ran up to run a test of the high. They could not get above and stay above. They just peaked their head above and therefore were summarily rejected. That is natural overhead resistance on the first time best time situation. This was yesterday from a first time best time situation. They were still rejected back up today to fill a gap left open and rejected again. Let's check out inside the numbers. What did we have today? I'm going to point out a few important things. You can read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. Volatility is a trader's best friend. That's item number one. We're looking for movement. We have an early pivot at 447.80. Why is that important? Well, we think better in pictures right at the vertical is today's activity. And you can see here the market opened below 447.80. It got there. It was summarily rejected at the pivot. We did have some traders short from that place in the live room inside the numbers. They did a little dance in front of it. However, we certainly had plenty of what's called participation. That was a short scalp with potential. Now, below opens the door to administer a test down to 446.90, give or take. Let me repeat that, 446.90, give or take. As you can see, they hit that one right around the opening bell. I was looking personally for a little bit lower, but we certainly had some participation taking the ride up toward the pivot once they found support at 446.90 all provided before the opening bell. In fact, we had some traders that took the notes from inside the numbers, the pre-market commentary, and they actually bought the market at that number in the pre-market. I don't necessarily advocate that, but you could do what you want with the numbers. Below opens a door for yesterday's low, 446.47, and the gap left open at 445.50, down to 445, that was on the board yesterday. And the flip side, we have the door opening for the flat line around 448.50. There's your 445.50 down at the bottom into the end of the day. And there's your midday run up to 448.50 to fill the gap. They did them both. We talked about it in the live room today. I said they were going to fill at least one of those gaps, if not both, today or certainly this week. Let's see what else we have as the day gets underway. Let's see what we have at about... 909. What's the scoop for the morning rush? Well, they're leaking and hovering just above 446.90, which is an important number and a gateway to yesterday's lows and lower. So what we're saying here is spike the low, suck in the shorts and rip it back up in the other direction. 446.47 was that low. This was the first of two spike the low and rip it back up in the other direction trades. You see what happened at 446.47? They came into it, they spiked it, and what did they do? They ran right back up to the 446.90. That was an exit point for inside the numbers and live room members. That's a scalp with potential, turns into a base hit. We'll take base hits all day long. Why? Because they put you in the hall of fame. All laid out before the opening bell. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the numbers. There it is in the spirit of knowing the numbers, 445.35, if they got below that, 444 and a quarter was the next place down. 445.35 is uber important. Low of day, 445.39. So right out of the chute, 446.90 is important. You saw that already. 447.80 is the pivot. It's overhead resistance until it's not. Closing candles above opens the door for the next thing, which they did later on. By 947, those traders that shorted the pivot slash overhead resistance would take a scalp portion of the trade off and book profit. Holding a trailer is fine. They did give you a double, a Whopper Junior, whatever you wanted out of that one. 
We had some traders in the live room wrote it all the way down for a Whopper slash Whopper Jr. 447.82 high against 447.80. Funny how that works. Remember, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. It's all in here. Here's another one, 10.22. If they spike the low, there could be a rip it back up in the other direction trade. The low from earlier that we're looking for is 446.47. You saw that trade. Traders that bought the spike of the low and rip it back have booked the base hit. And here's your exit, 446.90 will be resistance and an exit. We give you the entries, the exits, where it's wrong. Let me ask you this, scratch your head for a second. What more could you be looking for? Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. Everything you need is in here each and every day beginning from zero dark 30. Nothing great this morning on the move. From stocks on the move, we had Oracle, YY, and WRK. Oracle did come into its numbers, but it didn't do it in the manner in which we'll take a look at the chart anyway for a learning slash lesson opportunity. Oracle getting its buzz cut at the open. You see the numbers on the board. These are the ones posted before the open. They didn't do it in the manner in which. So they opened below the first. So the first is officially off the board. It disappears. Then they came up very short or just short of the second number. We did have some front runners in the live room. They got a couple of bucks out of it. However, they didn't really do it in the manner in which. So therefore, this number's off the table. And then the third number, they did the same thing. They bounced in front of it, came into it at the end of the day. So this one was essentially a no trade by the book. You could see it was an important area. They just didn't do it in the manner. That's all. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Now, Camp IWM was basically flat today, but you see what's going on. They're hovering around 184. They tested it again today. So they've tested it now basically four days in a row. They didn't hit it yesterday, but they were hovering. So we call it a test anyway. They're hanging around. Now they're making a bearish flaggish kind of situation going on, which can build energy for another leg lower. So we're going to use 184 as a bogey. Start getting below, closing below, intraday, they stay below, daily close below. It's going to open the door for the recent lows and lower. Irene will be coming over for dinner. Just as a refresher from a monthly chart perspective, you look at this and you say, well, you know, it's a pretty good case that this is nothing other than a bearish wedgish kind of thing going on. It's a channel. And if they can't break the chain, meaning get above the channel, what are they going to do? Well, they're going to go break the lower portion of the channel. And this is just a hypothesized one. Here's really the lower end of the channel by virtue of the low pivot or one of the lower pivots. But nevertheless, it's a concept. It's not refined to the number. What I know is that 184 is extremely important. Now, here's the flip side. Why? Because we're the umpire calling balls and strikes. So you had a little relative strength today in Camp IWM. And you also have an on-time type of situation. 184 is the bogey. Above 184, she can bounce. Below 184, and she can't. Leave it at that. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Buttigieg's crew. Another weekday, basically on par with the S&P, down about half a percent. But you see what's going on here. They're hovering over the 100 period moving average. It diminishes the importance of the 100 period moving average. Had they come into it on Friday, for example, it would have a different meaning from a chart and trading perspective than it does now. Now, if they come into it, it's been diminished. We're looking for 15,000 as an important number slash place in team transports anyway. Maybe a little below 15,000, but that's a big fat round number. And there's a reason why we talked about last week. We'll go over it real quick. So the market runs up to this place. This is just around 15,000. It isn't able to get through. It pulls back. It breaks out above. She's coming back to run a test. And we can even call this a breakout box. Maybe they don't stop right at 15. But if you look at this and say, well, this area here is certainly garden variety and bona fide support. This is a breakout area. Below 15,000, you have the 200 period moving average looming down here about another 300 points or so lower. So somewhere in that zone is garden variety of chart support. 
put that on a sticky note. And if you're running out of sticky notes, buy them in bulk. What about the Q people? Relative weakness today against the S&P. The Q people were down over 1% while the S&P was down about half a percent. Now keep in mind, they never ran a test of the breakup candle low. This one right here, they came up short before. So if they're breaking this low, that's the next place of importance. The actual low is 366.23. So we'll call it 366, give or take. That's the area they can test certainly and if they close below that area, that's a warning signal flare up in the air. Two-way action this week during quad witching options expiration, regular way weird stuff happens week. How about the financials? They were up today. So you have the tale of a couple or three different tapes today. You have relative weakness in the queues, relative strength in Camp IWM, which incidentally is my favorite market leading indicator relative strength in the financials. So they were all over the map is the bottom line. Speaking of all over the map and a pretty good proxy for the tech space as a whole is the SMH where she's now below and closed below that important place. Now we just looked at the IWM teetering at this 184 spot. Well, when you go over to the SMH, it's really the same tail, only not tail on the chart, but tail of the tape. And they now closed below that important place after eating time off the clock. Is this gonna be a fake out operation? They'll pop back above? Or is this really the indicator, if you will? Not from Joe's indicator shop, but an indication, a hint, a flare up in the air, a good proxy for the tech space is the semi space. Is this a hint? that she's all going lower. It's definitely worthy of a sticky note. It's worthy of remembering what this looks like, compare and contrasting it to the IWM, seeing what happens going forward on Wednesday. They're gonna move them around the CPI number. Hey, if I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.